Greetings everyone, this is your boy Kamal once again, and today we have a very interesting integral. It's the integral from 0 to pi by 4 of cosine 2x divided by log tangent x times cosine to the 4th power of x dx. So yeah, there's a lot going on here, and the integral, when we observe it, the first thing we notice is, what the hell man, I mean, what am I doing with my life? Anyway, I'm here to solve integrals anyway. So, the first thing we notice is this integral might be screaming at us that leave me alone, otherwise you are doomed. So, nothing frightening whatsoever. After all, we're math nerds. I don't think anything would scare us at this point. So, what do I want to do here? Well, I have a tangent x term over here, so I might as well leverage that by use of a substitution, and what exactly is that substitution? It's not going to be apparent immediately, but once I write everything out, it will be, I believe. So we're going to let 2x equal theta, which implies that dx equals 1 half of d theta. And as x approaches 0, we have theta approaching 0 as well, and as x approaches pi by 2, we have theta, no wait, x approaching pi by 4, we have theta approaching pi by 2. Okay, cool. So this implies that the target integral i equals the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of cosine theta divided by log tangent, terribly sorry about that, tangent theta by 2 times cosine to the fourth power of theta by 2 d theta and this factor of one half outside because of the differential element. By the way, that intro to the video was just some lighthearted humor. It's not exactly me having an existential crisis or anything. I am perfectly happy solving integrals here on YouTube and I am quite happy to share these integrals with you guys and the various solution developments. So Shout out to everyone watching, everyone who's ever watched, and everyone who's subscribed. And if you haven't subscribed yet, now would be a very good time. That would make me quite happy. Happiness. Strange thing, isn't it? When was the last... Anyway, forget it. Uh, so I have this new transformed integral in the theta world, and I believe now the substitution would become a lot more apparent because we have tangent theta by 2. And this is something... Of, this is something really cool. It's a very cool substitution, the Weierstrass substitution, where we let tangent theta by 2 equal z. And this leads to so many transformations that are absolutely brilliant when working with integrals involving trigonometric functions, especially in this complicated setting that we have in the form of the integrand. So what happens on differentiation? Well, I have 1 half secant square theta by 2 d theta equal to dz. And this implies that d theta equals 2 dz divided by secant square theta by 2. And secant square is 1 plus tangent square, so that means in the denominator we have 1 plus z squared. So that's our differential element. Now what about the cosine theta or the sine theta terms if you have any of those in the integrand? Well, let me show you what happens there. Well, sine theta can be expanded as 2 times sine theta by 2, terribly sorry about that, times cosine theta by 2. And this can be written in a strange manner, and by that I mean we could write it as 2 times sine theta by 2 divided by cosine theta by 2, provided that we have cosine square theta by 2 over here. And sine theta by 2 divided by cosine theta by 2 is tangent theta by 2, and Cosine square is the reciprocal of secant square theta by 2, correct? And we know that tangent theta by 2 is, of course, our z variable, and we know that secant square theta by 2 is 1 plus z squared. So this is very cool. So that's what sine theta transforms into. And from the identity sine square theta plus cosine square theta equals 1, you can figure out that cosine theta transforms into 1 minus z squared divided by 1 plus z squared. Okay, so here's our target integral once more, and we know how d theta and cosine theta transform under the Weierstrass substitution. 
but I seem to have forgotten about this cosine theta by two term, which is perfectly fine. We can work it out right now using the half angle formula for the cosine function, which is cosine theta by two equal to root one plus cosine theta divided by two, which implies that cosine to the fourth power of theta by two equals, let's see what we have here. We have one plus uh, cosine is now 1 minus z squared divided by 1 plus z squared divided by 2. Whole thing is now squared. Yeah, that's correct. And this equals 1 plus z squared plus 1 minus z squared divided by 1 plus z squared divided by 2. Again, the whole thing squared. We have some nice cancellation taking place. And that means we have two upstairs and two in the denominator as well. We have some nice cancellation. So this implies that cosine to the fourth power of theta by two equals one by one plus z squared squared. Okay, now we have all the ingredients we needed to transform the integral. And notice here that z equals tangent theta by two. So that means as z approaches zero, no wait, as theta approaches zero, that is, we have z approaching tangent zero, which is zero. And as theta approaches pi by two, we have z approaching tangent pi by four, which is one. Okay, cool. So all of that implies that i here is now one half the integral from zero to one of cosine theta, which is now one minus z squared divided by one plus z squared times two divided by one plus z squared. And in the denominator, we have log z times one by one plus z squared squared dz. So we have some nice cancellation straight away. Even the twos cancel out, leaving us with i here equal to the integral from zero to one of one minus z squared divided by log z dz. And this integral is pretty standard. Well, by the standard of integrals, we normally solve here. <clears throat> Low key flex. Anyway, so to solve it, what do we have anyway? It's the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 minus z squared divided by log z. So we could just solve it using Feynman's trick. So we define the integral function i of some parameter alpha as the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 minus z to the alpha divided by log z dz where the target case is alpha equal to two, and the initial condition is i of zero, where if you plug in alpha equal to zero, you have one minus one in the numerator, so everything crashes down to zero. Okay, cool. So taking the derivative with respect to alpha, we have i prime of alpha equal to the integral from zero to one of one, minus, uh, one divided by log z times the partial derivative with respect to alpha of one minus z to the alpha dz. So then we get negative integral zero to one, one by log z times z to the alpha times log z dz, some lovely cancellation once again. So we have neg negative integral zero to one, z to the, z to the alpha dz. Why am I forgetting that we're integrating with respect to z. Terribly sorry about that. So that means we have negative z, z to the alpha plus one divided by alpha plus one, limits being zero and one. And in the limit as z tends to zero, everything just crashes. So we have negative one by alpha plus one equal to i prime of alpha. And now to integrate, to, re to recover the integral function once again. And I'm gonna use a definite integral here from zero to two just to save time. So on the left hand side by the fundamental theorem of calculus, we have i of two minus i of zero, which we know to be zero. And on the right, we have negative log alpha plus one with the limits being zero and two. So i of two is your target integral. This equals negative log two plus one is log three and log zero plus one is log one, which is zero. So there you have it. That's our target integral. It sorts out to negative log three. And that was a very nice solution development indeed. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something from the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Do drop me a follow on Instagram. And in case you like the effort I'm putting out, 
do consider supporting the channel on Patreon. Thank you. See you next time.